Hello, welcome to episode four of Project 425 Recommission. It's a big day today. Three important things to talk about. The first is what we're gonna do with the bike. We're taking everything out, swing arm, forks, tank, subframe, exhaust, all coming out today. The second thing we need to talk about is you guys. It'd be great if you could subscribe somewhere around here. If you wanna hear this bike running in episode three, the previous episode, that's apparently somewhere around here. And there's also a little bell somewhere that you can touch so that you get a notification when we upload something new. The third thing, and the thing that I'm looking forward to the most, is figuring out if Dan is more like Danny Dyer than he is Ryan Reynolds. I loved your work in Deadpool too, mate. Did awesome. You? Yeah. Good, wasn't it? Brilliant. We're gonna put some gloves on and go to work, take some stuff off. You ready? I am. Yep. Let's get strippy. <laughs> 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 Those alternative Reynolds movies. Right, I'll go around this side. All right. And then uh, you can slowly lift the tank up and we just disconnect it from where we run it last time. We're good? Yeah, that is all yours, mate. We're going to have to disconnect all of this wiring and feed it through the subframe because it's all one unit, this. And then, Quite tight in there, isn't it? Yeah. Unclick the exhaust and then we'll pull it all off. What I'm doing now is basically feeding all of this loom through the subframe to get ready to take it all off. Obviously the cool thing about this bike <clears throat> is the fact that this is all pretty much one piece. Peg hangers, rear sets, rear subframe should pretty much all lift out as one piece. So Dan, I know you probably don't want to talk about it. I've seen a couple of interesting comments about um, not priming oil filters and questioning whether you know what you're doing and talking about. Um, and like I've said before, I've known you for 10 years working on stuff with Superbike Mag. I think you uh, you one of the first guys to do that Honda Apprentice scheme at yep. the Institute in... Sunny Slough. Sunny Slough. Yeah, that was me, yeah. I was their guinea pig. Yeah. Um, I think what it is, John, I think a lot of people have got different opinions and, and different ways, different of, doing ways of doing stuff. You know, I'd, I'd like to really think... It's important that they know that you do know what you're doing. Yeah, you know, 20, 20 what, two years in the trade. Yeah. You know, I've worked on, on numerous motorbikes and touch wood, never had a lot of problems. Yeah. Um, we're only human at the end of the day, but... Yeah. You know, everyone's got their ways of doing things, so we try and do it by the book, um, and, and that's the best way to do it, really, yeah, yeah. I think. You know, it's not hard to just grab a manual and, and do things, but you will come across scenarios that are not, it's not in a book. Yeah, So that's where you need your experience. Experience, yeah. And a cool pair of gloves. And a bad ass <laughs> pair of gloves, yeah. Unfortunately, so I'm not wearing a proper mechanic, you see. Before we go any further, I don't want loads of nuts and bolts just kicking around the floor mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff. So whatever we need to bag up, we'll bag up. Um, whatever can go back in the original holes, then we'll keep them in there. For instance, like we've just taken the foot peg hangers off. So I want to put the bolts back in okay. there. Um, <coughs> no chance of losing them then? No. That's it. Yeah, that's it. We'll just keep them nice and safe. Where are your ones? Uh, mine are down here. I was just about to... Um, Lost them already. No, I usually like to put them back in the hole. It saves me from losing them when I come back. I do it all the time on all my project bikes. Speaking of Hogan project bikes, I noticed my factory SR500 is currently being used as a coat hanger for a load of Ducati clothes. Yeah, mate. Looks mate, good, though. Maybe a nice little stand. We'll get to that one. It's the bollocks, isn't it? Yeah. Next we'll summer. Another day. Just for really like, all the rooting of the cables and all that kind of stuff. What are you up to down there, mate? I am taking the rear caliper off. So we treat this for a caliper restrip. Make sure everything's nice and clean. Put new pads in it. Wee. Steady. Like a big wobbly tooth. You hold it, John. Yeah, I got it. Are we good? Yeah. And I actually weighs nothing. There really is nothing there. <laughs> Yikes! In case you've ever wondered what the underside of a Desmo subframe looks like, 
We'll get to the corrosion and the cobwebs in a minute, Dan, but just have a look at that. Pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah, properly tricked. What's next? That's what we're going to do now. We're going to take the exhaust off. I can see now what you were talking about in needing to get in here in these nooks and crannies. Corrosion that's in there might only be kind of surface corrosion, but you're never actually going to be able to clean it off properly unless you do what we're doing now. Yeah. Pretty swanky that exhaust. What are we fiddling with, mate? We're just taking the exhaust valve off. Cut the cables off from the down pipe. So Dan, when I think about exhaust valves like we're chatting about now, yeah. I can hear that clicky whirry noise when you flick the ignition on while an exhaust valve is cycling through its doodah. And I can also see the words X up written up beside a cool old Yamaha race bike years ago. What is an exhaust valve? What's going on? It, it basically it moderates the back pressure. Right. Um, so that, so in moderating the back pressure, that allows manufacturers to to kind of shift or alter power or torque curves. That's right. Yeah, it also controls the volume of the bike as well. So you know, like this bike, for instance, is a really thumpy, you know, really, really loud thing. Really loud bike. Yeah. So it can control that as well. So passing kind of noise regulations for manufacturers. That's it. Spot on. Yeah. Simple as that. Who's out there, John? Yeah, mate. Just texting my old mate John McGuinness. He follows the project. He's oh, out yeah. racing Birdie's Ducati at the minute. You yeah. know John McGuinness? Oh, yeah, he wrote his book, didn't he? Oh. I forget, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Available, all good bookstores. John McGuinness's book. Probably Times best seller, no less. He does care, though, look. Hey, no, it's cool. Cool on John. <laughs> Let's go in. One, two. Look at me, Mum, working on a Desmo. Pretty cool. So, Dan, I know I'm probably sound like a bit of a broken record, but where are we at and what are we doing next? Now, we're gonna really try and get the swing arm out now, so we need to remove it from, from the swing arm. Ah, uh, the shock's inside the swing arm? It is, yes. So does that come out? That comes out, obviously we'll undo the nut here, there's one also at the bottom that yep. we take out, remove the chain, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. How do, you, how do you remove a rusty chain from a really, really delicate, beautiful road-going MotoGP bike? Tell me. I'll show you. Safety first, people. So it turns out that's how you get a rusty old chain. Out that's how I do it anyway. <laughs> Beauty, isn't it? It is. It's a bit of kit. So we'll get to the the spec of this shock, which clearly ten years ago was absolutely as good as it possibly gets. Yeah. And hopefully we'll be doing something with the Olin's guys over the winter to recommission this. Yeah, really? Go on. That felt like it was going to snap the bar then. <laughs> <laughs> it's a snap on ratchet, mate. Yep. As with the subframe. It just weighs nothing. Nothing. And that's what it looks like on the inside. Furry. It's a bit manky, really. 
Yeah. Need a bit of love. We'll give me that. Oh. There's not much of a motorbike left, that's for sure. Don't want to be thinking them wheels, do we? You sure don't. A forged magnesium Marchesini rim. Mate, we've pretty much achieved everything we set out to do. We have. And it's taken three and a half hours. To be fair, if the camera wasn't here and I wasn't here, how long do you reckon that would take you? Not long at all, really. It come apart really nice. Yeah. So I think, realistically, the next thing that we should do is maybe get out of the workshop. We've got to go and see a man about the swing arm being powder coated. That's right, yeah. Maybe shoot up to the show, Motorcycle Live, have a look at a V4 Panigale because yeah. V4. So while Dan finishes his pot noodle, it's another chance for me to remind you that uh, we appreciate your support. So any kind of subscribe that you can do down here, look for the little bell, take a notification of the next episode of this. And there is a stack of other content that we make as well. If you're just watching this channel because of this bike, be aware that we do new bike press launches, loads of other tech stuff. I'm just about to jump on my long-term Yamaha XSR 900. If you want to watch that, you can click somewhere around on this screen as well.